this is Stacy Eldridge. Welcome to Captivated. This world vies for our attention in a thousand different ways. But the most important thing, the preeminent thing, the essential thing is to give our attention to Jesus. Hey, friends. Okay, this is fun. So this podcast was originally constructed as being by women and for women. But as we found early on, that wasn't right. Primarily, this podcast is by women, but it's for everyone. Still, the guests sharing have all been women, and that's been awesome. But today, I'm so happy to be joined by our first male guest, who is actually my favorite person in the whole world, my husband, John. Welcome, John. Oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I'm a big fan. I've been a follower of your work for years. <laughs> I want you to be comfortable here. I know you're new to podcasting. Yeah, thank you. I am a little nervous so today. Just settle in. Thank you. Relax. Yeah. So why John is here today is because he's got a new book coming out on June 7th. And wow, you guys run, don't walk to get this book. It's titled Resilient. Restoring Your Weary Soul in These Turbulent Times. The title itself lets you know how much we need this. But let me just read you a tiny bit from the back cover, okay? Okay. It says, The human soul has a built-in yearning for joy and beauty and all good things. But that craving for life has taken a real beating in recent years. Between false promises of ease and comfort on one side and the sheer trauma of global disease and disasters on the other, people today are facing a shortage of peace, happiness, and strength. And resilient, you, provide skills and tools to strengthen your heart and soul and reveals a path toward genuine recovery and resilience provided by Jesus himself. Wow. So you can see why I say you, you definitely want this book. I've, okay, I got an advanced copy. You did? How did you score that? <laughs> I, I know somebody. And I have read it, oh, three or four times already. And it's all marked up and underlined. And I discovered the joy of stickers this time to highlight places. So you did? It's a beautiful little <laughs> piece of art now. So I know the answer to this question, but um, honey, what compelled you? To, to write Resilient? I think that I was trying to explain our work generally to someone the other day. Mm -hmm. And I said, we, we joined many years ago the fight for humanity. Mm -hmm. We really care about how people are doing. And we want to see them thrive and flourish and be well in the love of God and in his kingdom. So we, we joined that ancient fight, yes, which is the battle for the human heart, but also for people's wellness, for their, the well-being of their humanity. Mm -hmm. And I began to watch the trends through the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic. And it's crazy making. It's crazy making because, you know, we've just passed through global trauma, but like trauma survivors, most people are denying it. Yes. Yeah. Move yep. on quick. Move on quick. Let's just get life going again. Back and, to normal. Yeah. Let's not look back. But there's a couple phenomena that, one, I don't know a single therapist oh, who has an open. Right. Right. New York Times ran an article on this recently about the absolute overload in the mental health industry. There's no, there's no open slots. Right. I'm getting requests for referrals every week. Right. And, and they have wait lists. Long. It's long wait, wait lists. lists. Okay. So what's that? I mean, mm -hmm. let's just look at that. And you can say, even if you aren't looking for some counseling right now, why is that industry absolutely overwhelmed? Yeah. Okay. Nobody's got an opening. Holy cow, what's that? Long waiting list. And then on the other side, we were beginning to watch the trend that that we have been talking about of people through disappointment and heartache. Also, I think just weariness, giving up on God. 
Yes. Tapping out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and saying, you know, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what I believe anymore. Right. I'm not sure if I want to be a part of that anymore. So those are just two snapshots. And what I want to say is, look, you might not be in either of those camps, but you just lived through the same moment. That's right. And you breathe the same air. Yeah. And you face the same spiritual war that these folks who are kind of a little bit more maybe of a dramatic example. Right. right? But you sure know people who are in those camps. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But every human heart and soul is, is in need, I think, of pretty significant replenishment. Yes. And that's why I wrote the book. How hopeful is that? John, there's a lot out there about replenishing the soul, actually. So how is Resilient different from um, an outdoor wilderness program, say, or a practice of mindfulness? Yeah. Okay. In fact, I had, a, I had kind of a hard moment recently where uh, an acquaintance, not a close friend, an acquaintance read an early copy of the manuscript and kind of went, eh. You know, I, uh, I, I'm actually really familiar with like resilient practices and that kind of thing. And yeah, you know, I'm good. Because here's the difference is when Paul prays for us in Ephesians 3, he says, I pray that God, your father and creator, would strengthen you mm -hmm. out of his glorious riches by his spirit in your inmost being. Mm -hmm. True resilience comes from God. Yes. True resilience comes from our life in God. It's something that is imparted to us through our union with Jesus. And I, I actually, I'm kind of upset at the number of good people, followers of Jesus, who are more interested in a mindfulness program or in their exercise thing or, you know, something they're training for to go, whoa, 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 wait, I, I, I know those things are helpful, but it's not nearly the same as Jesus, Jesus. and the life that he provides us. Mm. So that's the difference in this book. This, this book is based on the premise that the soul is healed through union with God that resilience comes through union with God, that joy and anticipation and hopefulness, they all come as the result of more of our humanity coming into union with God, with Jesus. Yes, every good thing, everything good, everything good flows from the Father of lights. So you have to tap in. So, so talk to us about that. Like, we need union. I know that you've written about that in the past as well. Mm -hmm. um, get your life back. Particularly, you write about the natural graces. Yes. For your soul, to nourish your soul, to receive healing and replenishment from Jesus. But resilience is more about tapping in to the supernatural graces. Yes. Right. Because I still love, I love everything that is in Get Your Life Back. I, just yesterday, as you know, got on my mountain bike and took a ride up into the forest and it was the most replenishing thing I had done. Yeah. It was so life-giving. Yes. Just get in beauty. Mm -hmm. get and play, in, right? Yes. And nature mm -hmm. and play. Yeah. So I believe in all that, but I, um, I think I want to add to it. Yes. So it's not either or. Uh-huh. Let's let's build on that. Yeah. Let's build on that. But I think I also need to admit that won't prove sufficient for what we've been through and for the days ahead. Yeah. It it won't prove sufficient because okay, so here's this other little trend I'm seeing right now. Um every good person I know right now is really, 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 really busy. So busy. Everybody's busy. You know, we're postponing dinner engagements with people yeah. because either we can't make it or they right. can't, right. you know. Can you talk a little faster? Because I've got someplace to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Everybody's really, really busy. Now, here's the problem. So if we can just do the math for a second. When you rally to face anything, you know, the birth of a child, 
moving to a new city, taking on a new job, going to grad school. A crisis. Or crises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you rally, you tap into your reserves. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, and we've all rallied because we've tapped pretty deeply into our reserves. Mm -hmm. But now is the time to replenish those reserves before the next whatever hits. And the world's always a turbulent place, right? We go from an economic thing to a political thing to a disease thing. You know, it's just the world. Yes. Okay. So it's likely that down the road, there's more turbulence. Yes. Okay. Now is the time to replenish. But instead, what people are doing are running pell-mell everywhere in highly demanding lives. I'm really concerned, hon. Mm. I, I don't think that bodes well. Mm. You know, people with very empty tanks facing a new set of challenges, whether it's personal crises, right, or something that is more, you know, global. Let's be smart, folks. <laughs> Let, let's be smart. Okay. So the natural graces help. But when you listen to, for example, to that prayer in Ephesians, I pray that God, your Father, creator of heaven and earth, would strengthen you by his spirit out of his glorious riches. That's talking about tapping into something that it is supernatural, right? It's the kingdom of God, the life of God, and all the treasures of the kingdom being made available to our humanity. And so, what resilient does, it's almost like part two to uh -huh. get your life back, right? Yeah. It's like, here's a whole new set of skills that you can learn to receive supernatural resilience, which is the real kind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens mm -hmm. me, right? Or as the psalmist says, God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. I want to tap into that. I want to find that. I want to explore that. And I want to help people really plug into that and draw from it right now, right here in this hour. Oh, that's so good. Our reserves need replenishing. They do. And to hear that, oh, it's actually available in Christ. It's actually available. Whatever your circumstances are. And here's the cool thing. Like, it doesn't cost you. A dime. Mm. You don't. You don't have to take a three-week vacation in the South Pacific, or in Tuscany. You know, it doesn't require a great deal of your margin. Actually, it, we can tap into this with Jesus. With I guess what I'm saying is, without circumstances changing, right? You can find supernatural resilience from God. Let that sink in, because that is so incredibly. Hopeful. Right? Going back to you, you're talking about the busyness that people are living in. We have a sign on our refrigerator talking about creating and protecting margin in our lives. Just to be intentional about creating space on, on this day or for these hours, I am actually not available. I'm not because I need space to go Re for a bike ride. Replenish. Replenish. Yeah. And what has amazed me is how quickly that, that what is supposed to be margin gets swallowed up yes. by other things. Yep. So, so when I hear about practices to tap into the heart of God, to be replenished, I think you really have to fight for it. Yes. Yeah, you do. It's a choice. It's a choice. Um, but it's not. It's not like a wilderness challenge program. You don't have to leave home. Right. It's not going to take you three weeks. It's not going to cost you $1,500. Yeah, exactly. Like in our life with God, we can begin to draw on things like the river of life. So when Jesus stands up in John 7 and gives one of the most beautiful offers of all time, he says, if anyone's thirsty, come, come to me and drink. Those who believe in me, out of their inmost being, will flow rivers of living water. Now, this is really cool because that is supernatural resilience. And it is flowing from God through your heart, through your heart, your inmost being, 
And so can we riff on that for a second? Please do. Okay, this is really fun. So you go all the way back to Eden. There's a river in Eden. Uh huh. There's a river flowing out of Eden. We know that Eden is a lush, wonderful place, okay? And all of the great rivers broke off as tangents from that river. They okay, were, you know, they, right, yeah. Yeah, but the original is flowing out of Eden. And then in Ezekiel, he gets a vision of the temple. He's in Babylon. He's, been, he's one of the exiles that's been taken as a, a prisoner of war to Babylon. But he gets a vision. He sees Jerusalem. He sees the temple in Jerusalem, and he sees the river of life wow. flowing out of the temple. And that passage, Ezekiel 47, is so rich to read because, you know, first it's ankle deep as it flows out yes. across the country, and then yes. it's knee deep, and then it's so deep you can't swim across. And the narrative concludes like this, wherever the river flows, everything will live. Mm. I love that. Life mm. will flourish. Okay. And then John sees the river. He sees the river of life in Revelation 21 when he gets to see the city of God, 21 and 22. And he sees the river of life flowing down the middle of the street of the city of God, okay? And he sees the tree of life there, which shows that it's Eden. Yes. Eden Eden is back. Okay. Right now, the temple is your heart. Your heart is the new temple, okay? And the river of life is meant to flow through your heart. Your heart is a little outpost of Eden. And the river of life is meant to flow through your heart. Let's learn to tap into that. At the most simple level, you just ask for it. Just in your private moments with God, you just say, Lord, I need your river flowing from my inmost being. Holy Spirit, fill me with the water of life. And as we tap into that, we grow in our ability to like experience it, but it replenishes you. Like that's a supernatural grace. And that can take place in your five minutes of prayer in the morning. Yes. Yes. This is this is the water that Jesus is speaking of, right? When he says, Come to me and you'll never thirst again. Right? Yes. Or when to he's the talking to the, well. the woman at the same water. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That is so good. Yeah, so that's one example of supernatural graces that come to us from the kingdom of God that can be really enormous in a time like this. I I do. I do think God wants to replenish his people. I do. I think he's really concerned about it, Mm. actually. And um, our son Blaine is the big history lover, and he was sharing with me some some things that he's learning and reading uh, on military history down through the ages. And he's saying, when, when you're in a war of annihilation like we are, where the enemy just has absolutely no intention of surrendering, you have to have an unlimited supply of resources in order to win something like that. Yeah. Okay? An unending supply is how you win that kind of war. He was just blown away with, Dad, that's the moment we're in right now, that believers need this unending supply. And that's what the book's about. That's what the skills in the book provide, because most of us think it's going to be found in dinner out and a concert and just getting a good summer this summer. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're quite the same thing. They're not the same thing. There's joys to be had, but they will not replenish your soul or give you what you need in order to live in these, what you call, turbulent times. Yeah. One of the things that I love about the book, and I know that even as you're talking, my heart is burning within me. So I know that that's the same thing from the listeners today, but it's more than that. Like you said, there's skills. You you guide people through how to. Yes. How do you tap into the yes. river of life and guided exercises and practices. So it's so tangible and yeah. helpful and amazing. Yes. Normally I'm a reader. Yeah. But the audiobook on this one, I actually don't listen to a lot of audiobooks, but but when I was able to record the audiobook for this book, Resilient. I got permission from the publisher to just riff. Uh-huh. And so I go off on important tangents and 
when we get to the exercises that are at the end of every chapter in the print edition in the audiobook, I'm able to lead people through it, play some music. Oh, that's so good. Guide people into the experiences. Yeah. So get the book if you want to underline things. So we get the audio book to a deeper experience. I think so. John, you talk about in the book different kinds of resilience, mental resilience, emotional resilience. Is there anything you want to say about those things? Again, emotional resilience. Why can't you get a therapist right now anywhere mm. in the developed world? Mm. Why, why is everybody maxed out? Because we have spent our emotional resources and we are now needing assistance, right? That's just a snapshot yes. of larger humanity. And yeah. you know, other people are seeking it in other ways. So Jesus, <laughs> I love Jesus. Jesus says these things. He, he says in John 14, he's preparing his disciples, his friends, his closest colleagues for his coming execution. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's coming, mm -hmm. but he does. Right. And he says to them, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And I'm like, let? Wow. No, what? I just thought that troubled heart, it's like the weather. It just happens. Yeah. Right? The weather comes. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's not. It just happens to you. But Jesus is pointing to a different kind of emotional life where he says, your emotions are actually under your guardianship. That We shepherd our emotional life. Mm. And then when he begins to give you know, some of his most urgent warnings, talking about the crisis of the age, living through the climax of the story... One of the things he says in Luke is, do not let your hearts be weighed down. Do not let your hearts be weighed down. And again, I'm like, let? It just happens, God. What are you talking about? I can just read three minutes of the news mm -hmm. and my heart's weighed down, you know, let alone the personal. Right. The personal stuff. And But Jesus is showing us a way. And what I want to point out about Jesus' emotional life, <laughs> he is... He is very expressive of his emotions. He's happy. He's sad. He gets frustrated with people. Sometimes he's ironic. Sometimes he's sarcastic. Jesus demonstrates this vast emotional life. Yes, yes, this wide range. And, yes. he, and yet, when he is being tortured, he is able to say, Father, forgive them or they don't know what they're doing. In other words, he is governor of his emotional experience. It doesn't govern mm. him. And so, yes, learning emotional resilience, and it, it all comes from union with Jesus. So what we want to do is, for example, bring our emotional life more into union with Jesus each day. And it begins with, what are you feeling? Mm. Do, do you even pay attention to your emotions? <laughs> Sam was showing me this morning. He's like, whoa, dad, check this out. He had his iPhone out. He was texting someone and he said, there's new emojis. There, there's a salute emoji now. There's a, a blowing out like steam emoji. There's, the, there's, there's new ones you can pick from now. There's a little vanishing emoji, like they're ghosting you or something. And I said, oh, good. Oh, good more reason for us to have a really expressive emotional life, <laughs> right? But this is what we've done. We've truncated our emotional yes, life down into quick little, yeah. you know, somebody sends you a message and you just put a little heart on it. Ooh, not that I've ever done that. But... And move on with your day. Yes. But, but in order to have emotional resilience, you first have to be aware of your emotions. What are you feeling? Mm. Why are you feeling that? And then, and then inviting Jesus in so that we can have the union with Christ that we experience in other places in our life, we can have it in our emotional life. And again, he can impart then the supernatural strength, the supernatural resilience we need into our emotions. This would be the emoji of my, my head blowing. <laughs> <laughs> head blowing emoji. <laughs> Poof. That is so hopeful. It is. 
to just to know they don't need to run. I'm not a slave to my emotions wherever they go, hither and yon, but I can um, invite Jesus in, surrender. Cultivate a union with Uh, him. Cultivate a union. In our emotional experience, right? We cultivate union there. And then he wants to impart things to you like his joy. So, you know, just driving here today, I was listening to some pretty troubling news Mm -hmm. uh, on a podcast. And I I had to pause it and just go, whoa, Father, what what are you saying? And he said, ask me for my joy. Wow. Wow. I'm like, what? That doesn't seem really appropriate to this moment. Uh Your joy? Like, no, how do you want me to pray? How do you, you know? And he said, no, 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 start with this. Ask me for my joy. And I knew that, that, okay, there's the impartation of emotional resilience so that I'm not on this, you know, whiplash roller coaster for the next two hours. Right. Yeah. Wow, we don't have to like be the victim of of that because of union with Christ. Yeah. To have joy in the midst of this craziness. Yep. And that that is actually his intent. Yes. Possible. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Think of Jesus again, like the night before the night of what's going to be the arrest and the beginning of the torture. He sits down to dinner with his friends and he says, I've longed to have this meal with you. Like he's able to enjoy that moment without the coming moments robbing him of life. Isn't that amazing? What a, what a king. Yes. Emotional resilience. Emotional resilience. And then I think of too, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. So of course we need him to infuse us with that. Right. I want to ask you about another project that you're working on, but before I do, is there anything else you want to say about the book? I think that there are listeners right now who are totally tracking with us and they're like, yep, I'm in. I need that. Show me the way. I need that. I think there's a large group of people who are like, really? I'm actually doing pretty good. I'm enjoying my life. My kids are well. You know, I like my work. And What I want to say to those dear hearts is, yes, but you haven't replenished your reserves yet. And if a new crisis rolls through, either in your personal life or in the world, you you got nothing to rally to it with. So this is actually a practice that all of us need. Yes. That the deeper life in God, the receiving of the resources of his kingdom so that we are strong people for the coming days. That's, that's what I want to say. I'm concerned. We need this. Do you want to say anything about 30 days to resilience? <laughs> that it was, it was a lot harder to develop than I thought. So we have the pause app, which most folks know about, and it's free and it's lovely. And you can do simple little moments of pause in your day and, and just be guided back to God in a three-minute moment, in a five-minute experience. But what we wanted to do was develop something new. 30 Days to Resilience is a, is a program. It's like a workshop almost, morning and evening sessions that are about nine minutes long each, lovely, like beautiful music, where I am guiding you through these experiences, readers, other voices, that over time, there's six five-day modules that get us to the 30 days. You could do it, you know, Monday through Friday, or you could just go straight through it. Mm. It's your choice how you want to move through it. But one module is on emotional resilience. Mm. One module is on mental resilience. One module is on receiving the supernatural life of God, you know, things like that. Yeah, so, really good. Yeah, I'm stoked about it because it's it, it allows people to stop, reflect, journal, pray, yes, and learn how to tap into the rest of God's kingdom, which is where all the great stuff comes from. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. And that's on the pause app. You, it's on you, the pause app. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll put we'll put that information in the the show links as well. Okay. So, okay. 
friends, this had to have stir you. And, and I am imagining with, with deep hope. Yes, I yes. Hope, I hope so. Oh, yeah. This is so hopeful. What, it, what is available, the healing that can come, the life that can flow, the union with God we get to enjoy. And also you guiding us and teaching how to access those things. Really wonderful. So I was wondering if you would just pray for the people that are listening right now, who wherever state they find themselves in. Yes, let's do. Jesus, I ask you to deepen, to restore, to heal our union. I present my humanity to you for a deeper experience of union with you and all that flows from it. You are the vine. Mm. I am a branch. And I need all of the immunity and nourishment. I need all of the sustenance and strength that the vine provides a branch. I need you. So I present to you right now in this moment the fullness of my humanity as best I can. I just say, yes, here I am. Jesus, would you restore and deepen our union? And I ask that the supernatural resilience that you possess would become my resilience in all parts of my humanity. This is what I need, Lord. In your name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, John. Thank you. Fun to be on your show. (laughs) I loved it. (laughs) And thank you, friends. Just take all this to heart. This is for you. Till next time, bless you. Bless you.